everybody to the Single and Stiletto Show. I'm Suzanne Oshima, and I'm a matchmaker and dating coach at Dream Bachelor and Bachelorette, and I'm also the founder of Single and Stilettos. Today we have on our show David Crowther, and he's a dating consultant for men. And I'm so excited to have him here today because today we're talking about it's a part of dating, get used to it. And I know you're wondering, ladies, what am I talking about and what's David talking about? And we're not going to tell you just yet because I want David to tell you how he got into this crazy business of being a dating consultant. So David, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and how you became a dating consultant? The easy answer is out of sheer desperation. <laughs> that is what I'm going to say. And I, I came in and I had a friend who was doing it and I saw how he changed these guys' lives. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they walked into this room, I remember it was a Friday, and they walked in with the weight of the world on their shoulders. And on the Sunday they left and they, they you know, 10 times higher, um, metaphorically. So I was just, how are you, what are you, you know, oh, these questions. And he introduced me, he trained me to work with his company and it just, snowboard honestly awesome well you know it's funny whenever i have guests on the show and i ask them how they got into this crazy business of dating everyone always says the same thing well there's some funny story to how they got into it no one ever plans to be a dating coach or a matchmaker <laughs> i didn't plan it i didn't go to college for it so well let's jump into this topic so ladies i know you're wondering what's a part of dating and that you have to get used to it and what it is, is rejection. And nobody likes to be rejected, right, David? Nope, not yet. <laughs> but David's going to tell you how you can kind of get used to it and deal with it a little bit better so that it doesn't make you want to quit dating. Because I know a lot of people, if they get rejected too much, then they just want to stop dating altogether, which is a huge mistake. So David, can you give us some tips on how to deal with rejection? Absolutely. Well, it's a really, really deep area, but let me give a very good overview and hope that that works. So I would say there's two ways I would look at it. One is physiologically, and that is it's been very well known through science documentation that our brain makes a lot of things real, mm -hmm. whether that's we feel, you know, we get overstressed and we have physical manifestations or whether we have social consequences. Now, there's a great book I would recommend to anyone. It's called The Female Brain. I cannot remember the author, unfortunately. Ladies, uh, you can Google it. No yes. big deal. <laughs> However, there's just a great thing about how the brain is wired and how social disconnect, especially with women more than men, really, really hurts. And it hurts physically. As we all probably know, if we feel embarrassed, we feel a rejection, we get that feeling in the chest, maybe we feel the blood rush to our face. But it is just as, it's, it's also a muscle. It is something that you can, with the proper outlook and a grandiose goal, you can overcome. And what I mean by that is, if you have a reason why you're doing this, if you have something you're, you're trying to do, you're trying to... You mean a goal that you're trying goal, to achieve. Yeah. Exactly. So, and in this case, well, ladies, yes. what he's talking about, if you have a goal that you're trying to meet the right man, get into a long-term relationship and eventually get married, then this comes along with getting into that process, right? Exactly. And there's this really great concept uh, someone told me, and it's called the default future. And the idea being, if you keep doing what you're doing, you're going to live into a pre-existing future. If you take steps outside of your comfort zone and you put yourself where you can be rejected, but you grow and you realize things about yourself. And by the way, ladies, one of those things is going to be, wow, actually a lot of the guys that are rejecting me that I thought would be a problem, I actually don't really like anyway. So it's not as big a deal when you start to realize that they're not your guy. Right. That's way of saying it. Well, you know, I want to bring up a point because you, you talked about, um, because I use this quote all the time and I forgot who it's by. I'm, I'm drawing a total blank, but I use it all the time when I do a lot of my videos. And it's, if you keep doing the same thing, you will keep getting the same results. To yeah. think anything else is crazy, right? Yeah. So ladies, if you keep trying all these things and you keep getting the same results, whether it's um, 
the guy, the, the men keep dumping you or you keep re meeting the wrong type of men or whatever it is, or men that aren't, uh, are commitment phobes or whatever it is, then you're attracting the wrong men, right? So you got to do something different, right? So I, I think that's important. I think then the distinction needs to be made versus because rejection in the short term sense versus after a while. Mm -hmm. And it can be easy to start to shrug off things that, that happen when they happen very quickly or there's not a lot of chemistry or whatever. That's one thing. In a long-term relationship, I know it tends to be a bit more raw. And there's one set of questions, especially if you're seeing patterns, that I would really encourage you to ask. And you can ask just anyone. Your best friend would be ideal, but also people you just trust to give you an honest response. And the four questions are very simple, which is, when we first met, how did I occur to you? Mm -hmm. How have I surprised you? Mm -hmm. How have I disappointed you? Mm -hmm. Is there anything else? And if you get someone to give you a real honest answer to those four questions, you're going to see yourself the way other people see you. And that is incredibly powerful as an access point to be like, wow, I had no idea I came across this way when people first met me. Right, or right. I have no idea that after a while people would think this comment is a judgmental when actually I'm just trying to help, mm -hmm. whatever it may be. Right. And that's something that's hard to do is to ask other people's opinions of, you know, like asking those four questions. I think it yeah. takes somebody that's very brave. But, you know, if you want to grow and you want to be able to achieve certain things, it takes asking those really hard questions of your friends. Right. Yeah, I think it comes back to that. You don't have to take these big steps. People look at the big picture and they just freak out. I know I would. If you know, imagine, I want. Let's say I wanted to become Mr. Olympia. I don't. I don't have any ambition there. But if I just look at the guys on stage, like you know Arnie back in the day, I'm just like, oh my god, how on earth can you do that? Right. But if I took one step at a time, and I, you know, in dating, that's gonna be like, let me just try asking one person today, and then the next day, let me ask one new person. Let me do this one thing. Just one step changes that default future. And then one step a day is really, really good. That is so true. And I want to use a real life example that was actually in my own life that I think will help a lot of women understand this is um, my first job out of college. Um, I worked in sales and outside sales. And um, before I got the job, it was funny because I kept telling everyone, I was like, I'm not going to be able to do this job because I can't handle rejection. And so it was one of those things where I was like, well, I got to try it. And it was really, really hard for me. And, um, but w like you said, once you keep trying and trying it, then it's, it's like one of those things when I got rejected, it actually motivate, mm. motivated me to try even harder. Mm. So, um, Anyways, so, you know, like it just goes along with dating and with dating, you have to keep getting out there. You, you're you going to get rejected. I guarantee it. Um, and I will say that, like David said, is that the wrong, the wrong ones are going to reject you or you may reject them and they're not the right guy for you. But you got to keep going on dates and meeting men to figure out who is the right man for you. Right. Yeah. Yeah. There's. There's no, room, there's no benefit to sit in a room and imagining the perfect guy and hoping he somehow finds you. I mean, if you're watching this, then there's probably a chance that you've already tried that and it didn't work. Exactly. So, well, these have been some great tips. So, David, tell our audience how they can find you. Yes, I have a podcast. It's predominantly for men, but there are some great episodes with women that give advice that's applicable both ways. And it's called... Uh, humorously men's survival guide to women because apparently we need to survive uh, and you can find us at survivewomen.com or on iTunes, Stitcher, all those usual places. Awesome. Well, thanks David for being on the show and thanks everybody for joining us on the Single Stiletto Show. If you like our show, it's available both in video and podcast format. If you would like to view the videos, you can go to singleandstilettos.com and if you'd like to get the podcast, you can download it from iTunes. If you would like to get our free report on the top three things that will attract any man and it's guaranteed based on scientific knowledge. So you can go to singleandstilettos.com or you can click right here on the video below.